All right, first thing you need is a shop dog. Come here. Come here. It's nitro, which is the reason why the, well, I don't want to get in all that right now. We'll get in that some other time. Anyway, I want to throw it on a charger right away, even if it's a dead cell. That way you can work the lights and, um, you know, engage the uh, electrical system so you can troubleshoot a little bit. You could bring your own battery and you could do this on site if you wanted to. I don't really mess with people's stuff until I own it. Alright, so you got your power source, you got your jump around here. You see if it works. You see if you got power. You got a tail light. No control. Nothing going on. That's just sensors, no big deal. So boom, you got juice. That's good. You don't have a direct short. Um, just one less thing to look at, okay? And then we're going for the, uh, the electrical under here. There's more stuff we'll look at as we go. There's going to be a million scenarios if the bike don't turn on when you turn the key. But we're going to go through the electrical a little bit on this one. Um, but we're mainly going for fuel. We're going to do carbs. We're going to check compression. Um, we'll see if it turns. This one actually turns over, so they'll skip to that part because I can turn this key on and pump it, and it'll 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 turn over. But I'm not going to go crazy trying to start this thing. I know it won't start. And you don't know what the hell's going on downtown. So just pump it once, boom, you got the starter works. The motor turns. You're actually pretty much stoked at this point. If your purchase is right and you think that, uh, yeah, I bought something that was just sitting a long time. All it needs is to be uh, reintroduced to the road. So we'll go for the gas. This gas is gone, so we got to get that out of here. Take the tank off. Yeah, these bolts are like hand tight, so someone's been in here messing around. You know, if it starts, or at least turns over, you're like, man, maybe they got it in life. Yeah? But you never know, man. People are out there fucking everybody 24-7. Alright, another thing, the Petcock, a lot of times, they're just bad. You got a full tank of shitty gas. Don't try to put fresh gas on top of this. This is like turpentine. And it's all through the whole system. So get prepared to, uh have gas dump all over your ass, even if you have it off, because this petcock's frozen solder. You can feel it. And don't force nothing. Ever force nothing. The most important thing not to force. This turns. That's a good sign. If this thing won't turn, don't try to force it, man. You'll fuck so much shit up, you'll be, you'll be hating it. Like, wow, that's a, that's a good sign to a degree. But... It means someone was in it. Maybe it's not totally uh, caramelized. Anyway, the pet cock doesn't work, so I'm gonna disconnect the fuel, take the tank off, and we'll check the air box out. All right, I'm missing bolts, which ain't good. Well, just that, you know, whoever worked on it really didn't give a shit, so that's another thing to think about. So this is our first look here. It's not full of oil, it's not full of like, like big particles. So the filter's been in it a long time at least. We know that it's, it may be the original, well this is the K&N, but whatever. You know, it's not kegged with oil, and I'll show you in a minute what's in here. So we didn't know it didn't flip the fuck over a bunch of times. And it just sat after that, because it'd be fucking oil everywhere. So that's another good sign. So it's so far so good with this one. So let's see what we got. First look inside here. No, everything kind of looks like it's where it's supposed to be. This isn't completely blown apart. Usually they're laying all over the place. Got the air stuff going on. We got an inline filter down there that's going to have to be replaced. These are the Ram Air on an F3. On an F3, I don't know if that's why you're here. Maybe you're looking at it for your bike. Um, if those aren't connected, your bike won't break uh, 4,000 RPM, it just won't. It needs that. It goes right into the car, but floats, pressurizes the holes, etc. Da, da, da. All right. If you got a question about, I mean, if that's why you're here, the F3 bike, 
I don't even know if I'm gonna list the bike in the uh, description. Let me get a flashlight. I need a drop light over my uh, area here. All right, so there's your needles, which they're there. I've opened up carbs and they're just there's nothing there. You can't see the diaphragms or the needles. Wow. 99% of the time, these will not move. They're frozen in time here. These move. Let's see if this one moves. You hear that? That's what you want. All four of them. Wow. I don't know. Maybe someone had this started. Um, or at least did a carb job on it before we got to it, which is unlikely. But for the amount of time this bike sat, the pepcock was off. It was turned off. It's frozen off. In the frozen, it's frozen in an um, off position. Maybe the guy or someone, and I haven't seen it before in a while, turned off the pepcock, knew it was going to sit, left the gas in it, but actually drain the carburetors down. Now that's a possibility. That's something to think about in the back of your head. I mean, I got a lot of things going on in my head right now with this, but, but I, mean, I could put gas in this and possibly start this bike. And it probably will fire if we got sparks. We're going to check the spark next. I'm concerned with the oil and water and what's going on down inside, sort of. But um, I don't know. Because the carbs look so good, it's almost a bad thing because maybe something mechanical happened. You know? If it happened, it happened. I thought I was going to have to go through a, a different diagnosis with you guys, but I'm still taking the carbs off. We're still going to clean them. We're going through that process because that's going to happen with you guys no matter what. Um, I just need to see what the oil looks like. All right, I pulled one of the boots, number four cylinder. I'm gonna go ahead and see if it has spark. That's the next thing you wanna check out when the key's engaged, if you got a uh, spark to your uh, coils. And that'll eliminate a lot of electrical problems. I'm gonna turn the lights on. I'm gonna see if we can get some uh, this video to show. All right, we got spark. All right, that's good, that's good. That's good. So we got spark. You got no gas. The next thing you want to do is if you turn the screw out on the, uh, the float bowls to see, you know, what's inside the bowls right now. I'm surprised that the uh, diaphragms move. I ain't surprised. I'm not surprised about having spark. Electrically, I think we're pretty solid here. There's some issues going on on this side of the bike. I'll show you in a minute. The rectifier's been rewired already once, which, you know, they last a long time. So this could be, you know, who knows when that part was put on. Go ahead and um, I want to check the oil out. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to drain it. I might just crack it a little bit and I'll bring a sample of the oil up and we'll look at it together. Right. There's a lot of shit around it. We're going to clean it with a rag real quick. There's a lot of oil down here. But to chain, it's kicking a lot down, you know? Looks like there's some silicone down here also to seal it. No um, copper washer. We got copper washers. We'll put a new one on. Now another thing, the plugs, they look pretty good. They're nice and dry. If they were wet, you know, they can indicate, you know, now from running, not gas wet, but wet, wet, water wet, you know, the motor's probably, you know, it's a whole different scenario there, but we'll pull all four out and we'll go ahead and check them out. I'm gonna do the oil now. Just get a little small sample. If there's oil in it. Oh fuck. Okay. This ain't gonna work out, buddy. It's full of water, man. Okay, we got water, oil. Let me get my pan. We're going to drain this out. He had a piece of plastic jammed in the oil fill cap when I got there. 
and it looked pretty new. It didn't look weathered like the rest of the bike. So he might have just put that in there. That means that water was accumulating into the clutch section there. and Or the plug itself on number four, there was no plug in actually. Uh, the, the boot was half in. So that means we got water coming down into the fucking bike. In one or two places, probably both. The fact the motor turns over, whatever. Um, let's get some light on this. I'm gonna pull the plug. That really sucks. But you're not defeated yet. You bought the bike cheap. That means you can make, you know, put some time into this. If you've seen in my last video, a couple videos ago, we had that creamy white deal going on with the oil. We have the same scenario here. It'll be worse. Way worse. Here we go. Oh. Let's go ahead and save some of that and take a look at it. No oil. Now imagine you put gas in the carbs. It's just a little bit of water. It's like no... I don't know. No oil. I'm going to pump the... Um, I really shouldn't actually. But I'm going to give it a little pump. Being that we got to start it at work. And see if we can knock a little more out. I'd like to take it off the stand actually. And get all of it out. We could flush it with a quart of oil, which I might do right now. I got some used stuff and really just dump a lot in here. See if we could uh, kind of stir things up a little bit, you know. That's it. Now, if the bike would have started, which it can't because I got it disconnected, but uh, way bad for the motor, obviously. So I'm going to put the plug back in. I'm going to fill it up with some old oil I got, which I got a shitload here. I'm going to go ahead and crank it over again a little bit, a little at a time. Just to rinse out the uh, block. Be right back. You know, I do a lot of oil changes here, so... I'll get a bike with, you know, Mobile One in it that they want to change the oil out because they're trying to be, you know, new bikes. Yeah, every three, 4,000 miles, they'll change it out. I got oil, for, I got all kinds of oil. This happened to be Mobile One. Out of a 2010 Jixer. This is just to flush the system out. It's really nothing else. And this, you know, it's not even a four quart. Well, it's probably, it actually is three. It's actually a full, full motor's worth. But there's no contaminants in it. There's no water in it. Okay. No uh, gas in it. It's actually pretty good oil. Very basic, man, to start off with. I'm going to try to do this in one take. If I can get spark, flush this out, get the oil out of the. Um, I'm going to overfill this actually. And get the, um, the oil filter flushed out too. Take a road and look at the oil then. I'll be able to see more. So I don't know what the hell was going on just then. It didn't seem like much. Maybe you did have it covered. Yeah. Okay. Now we're gonna pump it a couple times. Just to stop the oil from jumping all over the place. Right. It still sound right. It sounds like we got compression issue on one of the cylinders. Four cylinder. Um, we had the plug out, so just for my own gratification, I'm gonna stick it in. We'll put the glue in. So I could 
discuss that out of my head for a minute. some discoloration, not as much, hopefully we'll wash this out a little bit here. <laughs> and let, let this rinse some of this off and then we'll go back and uh, we'll, we'll close it up. There's some cream, a little bit, not too bad. You can tell a lot from the oil, we just didn't have an opportunity to on this. But we flushed it out a little bit, we'll put uh, fresh oil in it, we'll start it, and then um, we'll start working on this stuff. So, essentially, what we're doing. We're lubricating whatever was exposed, which we don't know, but we know there was no oil fill cap and number four cylinder was open and the boot was off and it was outside, but it was covered. So right now we're lubing everything up, just sitting there, chilling in the motor, probably the first time in a long time. While we work on everything else, we're going to let that drain down and we're going to pull all the plugs. Actually, I'd be pulling the carb at this point, but I think I could actually start this bike. So let's do that first, and then we'll pull the carbs off and do the carb job on it. And we'll see what we got with the cam chain and the tensioner, and, and uh, see if the fan comes on. We'll check the water. I'd like to drain the water, but I'm going to leave it in for this run. I'll put another or, or four quarts or three quarts of old oil, older oil, but not destroyed oil, and test and tune it on the, on the, on the lift. For a little while and before it comes off the lift 100% for the last time we'll put fresh oil in it and we'll attempt to drive it and see what happens see if it shifts we'll go from there all right 